Hello, and welcome to Riddles in the Dark, where I endeavor to learn the rules of the One Ring 2nd Edition role-playing game by Free League Publishing. The One Ring 2nd Edition RPG is different to other tabletop RPGs in a variety of ways, but one of the main differences is the use of a set of rules to guide player heroes through an important encounter with one or more Loremaster non-player characters during the adventuring phase. The scene is formally called a council. When the company of player heroes meets one or more Loremaster characters in a formal gathering, a council occurs. While it is encouraged to roleplay the dialogue between the company and the Loremaster, the rules set out in the core rules are particularly appropriate to determine the progress of the meeting and ultimately the consequence whether positive or negative, in favor of the company. Now, not every encounter with a lore master NPC needs to be formal, and it would be encouraged to reward good roleplay by players during an encounter with an NPC. However, if the stakes are high, if it's a formal engagement, and there may or may not be something gained or lost by the company, then a council occurs. Some examples of councils as seen in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings movies would be Aragorn's meeting with Haldir in Lothlorien, looking for safe refuge and passage after the events of Moria, Gandalf's meeting with the White Council in Rivendell in The Hobbit, or when Gandalf the White, with Pippin, met with Denethor in Gondor. Oh, and let's not forget the ultimate council, an eventual failure, when Gandalf meets with Saruman to advise him about the One Ring, and well, we all know what happens next. For the company to achieve their goal, whatever that may be, in a council, there must be a number of successful skill rolls matching the resistance value of the council. To accomplish this, the participating player heroes have a limited number of skill attempts at their disposal. The council is set up and resolved applying the following stages. The council sequence, found on page 104 of the core rulebook. First, setting the resistance. Two, introduction. And three, Interaction. When the council is concluded, a final step is used to assess the consequences, essentially marking the end of the council event. Let's take a look at setting the resistance. Before the council can take place within the game, the players need to agree on what the company hopes to achieve from the meeting and possibly how to achieve it, like what questions to ask, who's asking them, what do they intend to get out of it, is there anything they're willing to give up in return, or sacrifice to help improve their odds of success. The resistance rating of the council reflects the difficulty the party faces in convincing the lore master character or characters to respond favorably to the petition that they're presenting. The lore master evaluates the importance of the object chosen by the company and compares it to the motivations and expectations of the folk they are engaging with. In general terms, a reasonable request, resistance three, is one where the encounter folk do not lose anything by helping the player heroes, or if the company is offering something in return of approximately equal import. A bold request, Resistance 6, corresponds to a goal that is profiting the company more than it does the people encountered. And lastly, an outrageous request, Resistance 9, happens when the player heroes are asking the encountered folk to do something that is dangerous or has scarce or no possibilities for reward. After the resistance is set, we go to the introductions. As in real life, first impressions are important, and during a council encounter in the game, first impressions set the tone of the council and directly impact the chance for the company to have a positive outcome. The company chooses a spokesperson, one player, generally the player hero with the best chance on success. The skills that the spokesperson that generally are good in, setting up a positive introductions, are this. Awe. A role of awe conveys a powerful message using few words. Player heroes can use it to impress someone and overturn a negative early reaction, or to quickly set the terms of the coming discussion. Using awe has a downside, however, as the spokesperson voluntarily mentions the lineage, deeds, and other personal information of the various members of the company for full effect. This could be used by the lore master for future things. Courtesy. A polite introduction is the best way to smooth a relationship before asking the support or other form of assistance. It is particularly useful if the company, 
or at least the spokesperson, is already on friendly terms with the opposing party. On the contrary, to unfriendly ears, a courteous speaker might sound duplicitous. Finally, it is possible to politely refuse to reveal too much about the identity of the group. And lastly, you can use the riddle skill. If the company has doubts about the opposite party's intentions, the spokesperson can craft questions and answers in a way so as to extract a lot of information from others in exchange for very little. However, a poor performance is sure to provoke mistrust in the opposing party. Now the idea is for the player to be role-playing their role outcome, based on the skills and examples above. However, depending on the player, the lore master may come up with how this plays out, if the player feels uncomfortable in doing so, letting the role decide the outcome. The introduction and the outcome of the role determines the length of the council meeting, the time limit, that is the total number of attempts, skill roles, that the company are granted to present their case, before they are dismissed by the intended audience. If the role is a success, the time limit is equal to the resistance of the council as set by the lore master, plus one for each Tengwar icon rolled. If the skill role is a failure, the time limit is equal to the resistance of the council, and if the council ends in a failure, it ends in a disaster instead. We'll look, take a look at that when we end the council. Let's take a look at the interaction. The interaction is the main phase and most challenging part of the council event. This stage, the players role play and engage with the lore master in playing out the scene and make skill rolls to accumulate enough successes to match or exceed the resistance rating of the council. 3, 6, or 9. The players choose their own course of action as they see fit, but their skill roles can be modified by the attitude of the people they encounter. The lore master decides accordingly using the following. If the lore master characters are reluctant, lose 1D to the skill role. The encounter group has reasons to be unwilling to help the company, possibly due to a level of prejudice or other source of concern. If the lore master characters are open, there is no modifier. This is the default attitude of the audience, representing the general inclination to listen at what the company has to say. If they are friendly, the players gain 1D to their skill rules. The audience is very interested in hearing what the player heroes have to say and are willing to hear their plea. Maybe the company was introduced by someone of note, or the spokesman belongs to the same culture as the opposing party. The lore master keeps track of the number of successful rolls scored by the company, with each Tengwar icon rolled counting as an additional success. Player tip. This would be a great use of hope, inspiration, magical successes, aiding an ally, to better increase your chances to rolling a Tengwar ruin, and therefore increasing your chances for council success. Any player or hero in the company can now be involved during the interaction phase. After the initial introduction stage, where only one player or hero was involved. Useful skills that can help in interactions to favor a successful outcome are. In Harden, this skill requires a crowd of listeners, or at least the complete attention of a single individual. Player or heroes may attempt a skill role using In Harden to raise the spirit of an endangered community or that of a downcast leader. The objective of the skill attempt must be obvious. Otherwise, even if the role is a success, its effect will be weak. Insight. This skill is useful to evaluate the emotions of the company is interacting with, possibly revealing unspoken purposes or hidden feelings. Persuade. Player heroes can use their persuasiveness to win the minds of their listeners, or to strengthen their hold on an already captive audience. Unlike in Harton, Persuade may be used discreetly during any kind of social interaction. Riddle. This skill can be used in a social environment, either to formally play the ancient riddle game, practiced and respected even by the unlikeliest of wicked creatures, or to gather information and news. In the latter case, a successful real role allows a player hero to put together all sorts of tidbits that incautious speakers might accidentally give away in their conversation, or simply to gather interesting facts, all the while seeming to appear uninterested or unconcerned. And lastly, song. A good song or tune is almost never out of place at a relaxed social gathering, but they can also be powerful diplomatic devices if the singer finds the proper song or intones well-chosen words. 
It's important, however, for the lore master to award great and effective role play by the player. A lore master should give both either a die roll and a great role play by a player equal weighting. Now, this doesn't mean they automatically negate a role failure, but the lore master, after hearing the player, may grant the following. If the delivered speech touches topics that are relevant to the company's goal and that are deemed important by their audience, then the lore master can allow the player heroes to gain 1D or even gain 2D on their skill roll. The end of the council. A council can end in three different ways. First, success. The company reaches the number of successful rolls required by the council's resistance. The player heroes achieve what was chosen as their objective at the start of the council. Failure, or success with woe, is the next. The company scores a number of successful rolls, but fails to match or beat the resistance rating within the time limit. The player heroes can now choose to simply fail, or be refused what they were asked for, or, with their approval of the lore master, they can opt to achieve their stated goal, but at a price. For example, they gain from the council much less than what they had asked for, or they end up acquiring one or more enemies from among their audience. The price doesn't need to be immediately apparent, and may lead to an unexpected challenge to be faced another day. Disaster. The player heroes fa fail all their available roles, or score a number of successful roles but fail to match the resistance after a botched introduction. The company is now seen as a threat by the folk encountered. The player heroes may end up being imprisoned, or worse, attacked. Optional Rules for Councils In the Ruins of the Lost Realm supplement, there is an optional rule that changes the set length of a council. This optional rule increases the difficulty for the player heroes to succeed, especially if the audience are resistant to the company's requests, demands, etc. Time limit for councils. As seen on page 106 of the One Ring, during the introduction stage, the spokesperson of the company makes a skill roll to determine the total number of attempts that the player heroes are granted to present their case. Using the optional rule from Ruins of the Lost Realm, the time limit is determined as follows. If the introduction skill roll is a failure, the time limit is equal to 3, regardless of the resistance. If the roll is a success, the time limit is equal to 4, plus 1 for each successful icon, Tengwar, rolled. In comparison, following the core rules, time limits, amounts of skills roll allowed, is set by the resistance of the council, and any Tengwars rolled in the introduction, adding to the value. For example, for a bold request, resistance 6, the time limit is set at 6, plus any Tengwars rolled during the introduction. However, using the optional rules, the resistance does not factor into the time limit, and the number of rolls is limited to 3, plus any Tengwars rolled during the encounter stage if the roll was a failure. If the roll was a success, it would be 4, plus any Tengwars rolled during the introduction phase. You can see how much more difficult it would be to succeed in a council using the optional rules, and the importance of utilizing hope, inspiration, aiding and granting more bonus success dice in each of the rolls. But it's up to you as the lore master to decide which one you're going to use. Will you stick with the core rules as set in page 106, or go with the optional rules and ruins of the Lost Realm supplement? Comment on what you would like to choose and what you choose. I personally like the core rules. Once again, thank you for watching, and if you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe, and please share with your fellow lore masters and players. If you haven't done so already, please check out my Strider Mode solo campaign, where I explore Eriador through the eyes of the solar player hero. Again, thank you for watching. Cheers.